Welcome to TSPN News Desk. I'm Mike Spence, and I'm here today with my special guest, Phil Girolani. And Phil, welcome to uh, Thank the you. News Desk Thank again. You. Thanks you, for having me back. Oh, you've been on the show, I know, a couple of times. But uh, last time you were only vice president of the uh, Historical Society, Amador County Historical Society. And you're also on the committee, the head of the committee, to do the new museum renovations for the Amador County Historical Museum that we have. The Amador County Museum, is that the correct title? Yeah, I, I was, uh, the last time I was on, I was the vice president and I was the chair of the museum committee. But uh, when I decided to, or was moved up to president, I dropped the uh, museum committee chairman because it was just too much to do for one person. So Judy Jebian is now the chair of the museum committee. I am still on the committee and still very active at the museum, but uh, the president thing takes a lot more. You sure are. You're doing all the work up there. I see you up there working <laughs> every day, practically. Well, so. this, I'm not alone. If you were there yesterday at the yeah, museum, I saw quite a few, uh, we had a, a great turnout volunteers. yesterday of volunteers. It was really... Yeah. Uh, it was really uh, impressive and you know heartwarming to see all these people up there working. Uh, well, people support you. They know you primarily. For, I promised you I wouldn't talk about Teresa's, but they know you from Teresa's restaurant, and, mm -hmm. and that's been a long-standing historical restaurant here in Amador County. And you do deserve compliments for having great food and a classic uh, bar over there. And you, that restaurant's been there in family for over 90 years. I'm sure that's uh, worth complimenting you on. I appreciate your appreciate staying that. in business there and, and providing all that great uh, service to our community. We had the uh, Hot Jazz event there last week, and you guys did a great uh, job of hosting with food and all the music. I didn't realize there was such a backyard area there. It's so scenic back there. Yeah. It's our own, our own little park out there. It is. I've always been inside the restaurant at night, but I've never been there during the day. What a, what a great place that is. Uh, but we wanted to talk uh, primarily about the uh, Amador County Museum because that is going to be reopening. You've been working on that, and you have a deadline. I appreciate you coming on the show because I know you have a lot of workers up there right now. You have a deadline coming up uh, another month and a half, or how? when is that expected to open? Uh, we're looking to open it to, to an invite, invited, invited guest only party on uh, Friday, June 14th. And then on June 15th, we'll be open from uh, 12 noon till 4 in the afternoon to the general public. So uh, that same day there will be the uh, reopening of the Wheels Park out at the park in Jackson Gate. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and then the museum, people can go to that event at the uh, Wheels Park, and then they can come by the museum if they'd like. We're hoping to, to have a great turnout. And that same weekend, that same date is for the Vista Point opening, too, as well. You're going to combine the, uh, That's the two parks. We have a lot of things going on. In a Jackson. lot of things going on that weekend. I think and, and that Sunday is Father's Day, I believe. So, oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, come out and... Easy to remember, yeah, to be out that weekend. And celebrate uh, the... You know the work that's being done at at the at the wheels and the opening of the museum because they're they're both real vital parts of our of our community and our history. They are. We're going to play some footage. Uh, we took some footage of the museum and we're going to play some of that while we're talking. Al, you can go ahead and cue some of that up. But uh, you know we'll just keep on talking about that. You know it's important not only for people who come to visit Jackson. Uh, but for people like myself, who this is my adopted home, I've only been here for 10 years, but I'm always continually learning about, you know, the history of Jackson. Every time I pick up a book or I see see a mural, I'm learning something new and picking up on the name. So the museum is like an important part of, uh, you know, our community in terms of serving people, not only visitors to Jackson, which is a great thing to have, but uh, for people who, who have lived here for many years who are still learning, right. like myself. For sure. Yeah. And I can see some pictures uh, behind you now of that Tom, I guess, took early that day and, mm -hmm. uh, as he's gone through the museum and showcasing some of the artifacts there and in the different rooms. Uh, and, uh, yeah. So many things in that building. I couldn't believe you had a, uh, you know, some of the large items. And, and uh, you know, you have sections for Ione and sections for different parts of the county and, you know, really a good history of... Uh, of different different types of items, but yeah. the f photography is incredible too. Seeing all the names and f photographs. Correct. The uh, you know there's the main focus or one of the main focuses in the in the in the museum is is on the family that that built the original structure, which was the Brown family, and I believe that it was built the building original building was built in 1859, and it was. Uh, given to the county back in 1948-49. So there's an emphasis on the family that lived there, 
Of course, there's a big emphasis on, on, on gold mining. And, you know, we've had a pretty, uh, what you might say, uh, interesting history, history in, this, uh, in our town. And uh, that's also displayed uh, in the museum. So I didn't see any roulette wheels in the covers uh, there. Uh, uh, there's one there. There's one there. <laughs> uh, so uh, one of the things we'd like to do when we get the museum reopened is to not have the exhibits be stagnant just to you know, do an exhibit and then just leave it that way. We want to kind of have exhibits evolve from one thing to another so that people will want to come back more often to see what, what's on display. Right. right. So that's, that's one objective that we have when we reopen. Well, when they built those buildings in the 1850s, I mean, they weren't really that structurally sound to, to built to last another 100 years. So you've been in there doing a lot of the, the construction and a lot of that work. And I read somewhere that you were putting in uh, steel trusses and trying to re remodel the joists because the buildings had shifted over time. Or how did, how did that work take place? Uh, actually, we kind of went over that uh, when I was on the last time with Tom. But it, basically, it was seismic retrofit uh, work that ties the floor, uh, the floor structure between the, the first floor and the second floor. It ties it to the uh, to the perimeter brick wall, and you do that by attaching something to the to the floor joist, and then drilling through the wall and putting a plate on the outside, and then kind of tightening it down. So, the idea is if there's an earthquake, that everything is tied together uh, and will hold up better. But if there's an earthquake here, I, I don't know if yeah, we'll that see. building will make it through or. or I don't even know if ones that are supposed to be earthquake proof will make it through it. Well, the weight of all that old brick, you know, it, it kind of bulges out and shifts right. around and, and does that type of thing. So it's great to have you in there. You had a contracting background, a construction background. Correct. You know, you're, They're you're working just, on an old building out at the restaurant for many, many years. Our, our building uh, out, out there at the restaurant, I believe, was built, uh, according to the late Larry Sonata, was built uh, in the mid-1850s. And, of course, this building was built in 1859. Pretty similar, yeah. Uh, this building that, uh, where the museum is, is is a brick building. Ours is mostly uh, stacked rock. And, and like, uh, like the stacked rock building, the, there's hardly any mortar. And the mortar in the brick on, on the museum is, is mortar that doesn't... Uh, it hasn't held up well. It sort of cr has crumbled over time. So the brick can be sort of, when you try to drill through them or you try to do something with the brick, they tend to fall apart. Right, right. And that's one of the issues we had to deal with. Well, you, you, they obviously selected the right person to uh, be, the, you know, handling that project and having your experience with Teresa's and the buildings out there because they are very similar when you look at them, the, the wood and the different, uh, different age. Yeah. Uh, factors. We're going to go to a break uh, here shortly, and we're going to come back. Oh, never mind. I've got a lot more time. I've got three or four more minutes there. I thought I heard Alan saying there was a break coming up. But, uh, you know, the, the museum part of it uh, is great because we don't really have that many museums in Jackson. I know when you, when you think of uh, towns that are this historical, you'd think that there would be multiple museum facilities and uh, you know the Amador County Museum is really one of one of a kind you have Kennedy Mine the Kennedy Mine is and, uh, is a, a few. is a museum of sorts so, you know mm -hmm. the they have their tours tours up there they also just recently built an archive up there that's uh, a really nice building and it's uh, it's being used to house mostly mining uh, related uh, artifacts and you got the Monte Vida Mont Monte Vida yeah. store in Sutter Creek mm -hmm. And you've got the Chinese uh, laundry there or out there, or the Chinese building, Fiddletown, the Chinese general store, or whatever in Fiddletown, and they mm -hmm. have some nice historic buildings there. But yeah, our museum is is a county museum, and uh, it, you know we're hoping that once we get it open, it, it'll stay open. Yeah, I mean Soban Winery has a little uh, museum that they have out there, but you know the Amador County Museum really is quite elaborate. I mean you can really get a lot more in that facility, you know, when it's all finished. Yeah. There's been a lot of a lot of artifacts uh, donated to the museum by local families, and so it's we're almost obligated. Uh, you know, when people have yeah. donated them something to the museum, you would hope that you could have it on display. Right. It's kind of like we're giving this to you to put on display, and you know. We'd appreciate it if you if you have the museum open. Yeah, well, I know you have. Um, I've been over to the Jackson Business Community Association office, and you have a lot of great stuff mm -hmm. in the lower part of that building. Is there an upper part of that building where uh, you have the historical? I, I think that's stuff? I think that's uh, rented out. When people live up upstairs. 
Um, yes, we do have the uh, that office there, and it's been decorated uh, very uh, well by, uh, particularly Bobby Keeling has put up a lot of the pictures and. And people go in there and it's almost like a mini museum in there. I'm a photo nut. If there's a place that has all that great photography, I just love seeing those old, old pictures uh, of the area. Yeah. You know. And there's a story, you know, uh, behind every every picture. So yeah. um, It wasn't that long ago. It's where we live and, you know, you're looking <laughs> back, you know, maybe a hundred years at the most. And, and uh, a lot of those, you know, the to topography and, you know, when you see those outside shots in the old stores, you can almost make out you know what they look uh, look like today and and get an idea of how much uh, things have changed and you look at some of the streets and things around Jackson and things haven't changed that much no you know? no yeah. the, the characters have changed a little bit over time but uh, we our town is is still got a lot of historic charm to it and uh, the, the city has made some you know some strides in protecting uh, the historic hor historical buildings we have in the downtown area so hopefully uh, with Stan Lukowitz redoing the National Hotel, uh, we'll get downtown Jackson breathing again. Yeah, that's a big addition right there at the foot of Main Street. I mean, that's the key and having great uh, new businesses throughout Main Street. But we are going to go to a break. I knew All we'd right. have a break sooner or later, and uh, we'll come back. It's been very informative. And Can we'll I say one back. thing? Sure. I want to thank everybody that's helped uh, at the museum. And Well, we're going to come back and actually talk some more, so you'll get a chance oh, to even really? thank them. Okay. Well, right now we'll go to a break, and Phil's going to come back, and we've got a lot more talking to do. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll take this break, and uh, please stay tuned. You're watching Amador County's local television network, TSPN.